to get us underway in episode number three we're going to look at all of the transfers from season three the first thing we're going to look at is the players that have left the club kicking things off with Jan Hurtado he's a player that really wasn't going to get into my first 11 especially now that Mieres has come in and was scoring goals for fun last season we decided to allow him to go to America MG for around three and a half million pounds the next player to leave was Nicholas Valentini now we didn't want to let him go at all but an offer of around 12 million pounds came in from Bahia and we just couldn't turn it down the way the club is run and the finances involved in this deal meant that we could go out and sign other players that would be more valuable to us in the future the next player to leave was Vicente Taborda he's a right-sided midfielder who was okay he was in and around the first team but definitely wasn't going to get in and when we signed a player to replace him anyway you'll see exactly why we allowed him to go in a second he has gone to Corinthians the next player to go was Santiago Giordana he's a player that signed in the first season couldn't get in the first team now and we have decided to allow him to move on to Alianza that means that we now started to reinvest the money that we had. The first player that we bought in was Juan Sforza. He actually came in on a free transfer, which was an absolute steal. Couldn't believe that he was on the market. We just swooped in after he left Newell's old boys. We picked him up and he plugged himself right in the middle of the park. And he played some really good football. The next one to come in was Lucas Escobar. Goalkeeper was a position that we talked about at the end of episode number two. And this is what we went and bought. He is only supposed to be a rotation option, but he did end up actually taking the number one shirt off of Romero. The next player to come in was Federico Redondo, another free transfer that comes in from Argentinos Juniors, and he has played some decent football across the season as well. Has some really good stats, as you can see, passing long shots in terms of his physicals. At the age of 22, it's another steal. The next one to come in is the one that would replace our right winger and it's Gianluca Prestiani. He's a wonder kid who will only get better at the age of 19. It took us around £12 million to get him from Vélez, but he was worth every single penny. The next one to come in, in fact the last one to come in, was Nicolas Taliafico. And again, this one ties in with those high reputation players that the fans wanted. Been playing his club football in Europe, likes of Leon and Ajax. He was available for around £250,000 from Leon. We just decided to go out, splash the cash, get the player in. And he's now a solid option at left back, which allows us to play Barco in a number of different positions. Right then, those are the players that we have bought in. How would they gel? What could we achieve in season number three? Let's go to the competitions and find out. Now, Boca Juniors would normally play in a lot of competitions, but this season we played in even more. To kick things off, we're looking at the South American Recopper, and we played against Fluminense. We would beat them 4-2 across two legs. In the Argentine International Super Cup, we would be drawn against Racing Club. We would beat them 6-2. In the Supercopa Argentina, we would face off against the same team, Racing Club. This time, it was a 3-3 draw and we would win on penalties. Next up is the Copa Argentina Axion Energy. And just like in Season 1, the fifth round would be the only round that we would play in as we would lose 1-0 to Almagro. In the Copa Libertadores, we would be drawn in Group A. We would go up against Colo Colo, Penarol and Cerro Portino. We this time would play in six games. Once again, we would win six games. We would have a goal difference of 20 and we would finish on 18 points. That would qualify us for the second round where we would play against Catolica uh, Quito. Uh, we would beat them 5-1 over two legs. In the quarterfinals, we would play against Atletico Paranense. We would beat them 4-2 on aggregate. In the semi-finals, we'd come up against River Plate and we had two absolutely crazy games. We beat them 8-6 over two legs to qualify for the final where we would play against SC Internacional and we would go on and win back-to-back -back Copa Libertadores. If we show you the final there, just so you can have a little look, Barco and Mieres 
getting the goals. They did score a late goal through Rafael Elias, but Barco became the first Argentinian player, I believe, to score in back-to-back -back Copa Libertadores finals and set himself a new record. So that just leaves us with the league and once again split into two halves. So in the first half with the overall table, we would play 41 games, we would win 32, draw 5, lose 4, have a goal difference of 74 and this season we would finish on 101 points and if that's not impressive enough look at the teams just below us river plate 41 games 99 points racing club 41 games 95 points this season we were in a proper title race we had to be at our very best to win the league once again looking at the stats goal scorers this season Mieres couldn't get in and amongst the top goal scorers in terms of the average ratings we had Palacios with a 7.50 Sforza got 15 assists Palacios got eight player of the match awards and Figal got himself 12 yellow cards for the second phase of the Argentine league we would be put into group A this time we would not win Group A. We would finish in second place, one point behind Racing Club, but it was still enough to qualify us for the next part of the competition. And that was the quarterfinals. We would play against Tigre. We'd beat them 3-1. Then into the semi-finals, we'd be paired off against River Plate. We'd beat them 1-0. And then in the final. We would play against Racing Club and for the third time this season we would beat them in a competition to win the Argentine League once again. Just to show you this final, goals from Sforza, Mieres uh, after 10 minutes and 44 minutes, him getting himself two. Sforza also got an assist, fantastic final ending final ending a fantastic finish to the argentine league season sees us win another competition so we have now won the league three times we've won the copa libertadores twice we have won a number of super cups which is crazy we've won the south american recopper the only thing is we just got knocked out by almagro in the fifth round of the copper argentina axion energy but apart from that block, which we can look over, we have had another fantastic season in Argentina. Looking at the finances, I will sound like a broken record, but once again, this club does not generate enough money. We are trying our very best selling players, winning competitions, but still we have an overall balance of 8.1 million, a transfer budget of 8.2 million, and a wage budget of 640,000, which means that if we again spend all of the transfer budget, the club go into debt, and the wage budget, we could adjust, but I'd rather see what we can do in the transfer market anyway uh, in terms of the club vision we are still secure in our job and once again we get a b from the board in terms of the feedback for the actionable objectives work within the wage budget on course maintain the club's status as the most reputable team in argentina we are doing uh, sign players to sell for a profit now so obviously the board realized that money is an issue and they are starting to tell us that if we want money we need to start selling players so barco could be on the chopping block soon uh, information objectives minimum of three year contracts for first team players then by the end of next season challenge for the copa libertadores win the torneo binance and win a domestic cup with the board feedback so as I said we get a b there they're pleased with the copa libertadores final win the win against racing club in the copa della league professional and fairly pleased with the number of goals scored whilst using a Geigen press. With the supporters, we get a B minus. Again, Colombian players holding us back. But they're pretty much happy with everything else that is ongoing at the club. So once again, a B and a B minus for feedback is good feedback. Let's have a look at the squad as we head into season number four. To look at the squad, we're going to do it in two ways as usual. I'm going to run you through my best 11 going into season four in just a second. We'll then also go and look at the assistant manager's best 11 and see what gaps there are and where we might need to improve the team. So to kick me off, I'm going to go with Escobar in goal, Talifico left back, Valenti, Figal and Gilberto at right back. We then have Redondo, Sforza and Medina now as my midfield three. Jansen on the left, Prestiani on the right and Mieres up top. If I show you Mieres, 
this is an absolute freak of a player certainly in the system that i am using he has now played in 82 league games and scored himself 50 well 49 league goals he has got 12 assists and 10 player of the match awards across two seasons overall last season he played in 54 games and scored 36 goals he's absolutely fantastic and one of the best hidden gems that i have found so far in this game looking at jansen he found his game time quite limited after last season's height but he's probably still the best option on the left played in 30 league games scored nine goals could not hit the heights of last season Mr. Prestiani, he's a fantastic wonder kid. He played himself 55 games in total across the season, scoring uh, 21 goals in terms of the league competitions, but 61 overall, 21 goals, 39 total appearances and 9 goals in the league with 13 assists. Then Sforza came in on a free transfer and he himself played in 37 games scoring 12 goals providing 15 assists 53 and 17 overall the other free transfer was redondo he has come in from argentinos juniors and played some outstanding football too if we look at his stats 30 games in the league seven goals 40 and nine overall so we have a team that is really really building now and starting to gain momentum I don't know how much we can improve this squad. Probably centre-backs is where we're going to need to look. Let's see if the assistant agrees with me. So my assistant manager now thinks it's Escobar, Sorachi, Figal, Valenti, Gilberto, Redondo, Sforza and Medina. Prestiani on the left, which is interesting. Palacios on the right and Mieres up top. So we're pretty much there. Prestiani, I would swap sides. Mieres is obviously the number one striker at the club now. Palacios, I think, would put on the left if Jansen was to leave. Then Sforza, Medina, Redondo is fine. And then, yes, yeah, centre-backs. I'm not 100% sure about Figal. Valenti is doing well since he has come back to Argentinian football from Parma. But I think it's probably an area that we could look at also going forwards. In terms of the report... The list of youth prospects is now shrinking. Uh, we have let a few go, which didn't live up to the hype, and then we made a few pounds off of some of the other ones. Uh, set piece chance creation is a strength. Aerial reach, natural fitness, composure, top goal scorer, best player form. Uh, in terms of weaknesses, overall depth outside of the first team. There's not a lot of depth at the club. This is something that the game seems to throw up quite a lot me personally i like quite a compressed squad so you only have a couple of players for each position and then if you need to add to those positions you can have versatile players rather than having massive squad and everybody gets unhappy because player power is an issue in football manager uh, long throws punching tendency free kick taking goals against uh, 25 of the 56 assists conceded in the last 49 matches came from through balls so yeah defending is probably going to be the area that we look at uh just to go back to that then valenti and figal are the current partnership hopefully we can invest in that area going forward but once again a quick overlook at the competitions another fantastic season copa libertadores everything in terms of the league the supercopa argentina the argentine international super cup the south american recopa we only have that one block which is in the argentina axion energy cup where we once again reach the fifth round Right then, if you're still with me at this point of the video, firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you could hit the like and subscribe button. It really would help the channel and I really would appreciate it. Before you go, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel. There are other videos such as hints, tips, tutorials, Wonder Kids, Let's Plays, a little bit of something for everybody on the channel. But for this one, I'm going to leave it there. Come back and join me for season four of the Boca Junior Save very soon.